everybody. Uh, today we will be talking about chromosome and sex elimination. This is the new chapter that we have in the course of science. There used to be cell division in place of this chromosome and sex elimination already, but we have this chromosome and sex, sex elimination. Here in this chapter, we need to talk about what is chromosome, what are the parts of the chromosome, what are the types of the chromosome according to the present, uh, presence of uh, this centromere. Um, and uh, autosomes, heterosomes, and uh, sex determination. Then after only we will be talking about uh, different types of these related to chromosome and uh, genetics. Now let's talk about chromosome. Before that, we need to know what is a cell. Cell is the structure. Uh, it is basic structural and functional unit of life. Every living organism consists of their cell. And inside that cell consists of nucleus, which bears the thread-like structure called chromosome. Chromosome are those thread-like structure which carries the um, hereditary characters from parents to offspring. Chromosome consists of a pigment, biological pigment called gene, that determines the biological characteristics of living organism. Like we all are human, we have the characteristics of human. It means we have the gene that determines our characteristics and that gene is present in the chromosome. The structure of the chromosome is different according to the different living organism. There are different types of uh, autosomes, there are different types of heterosomes, the structure differs. But what we find common is telomere, chromonema, primary constriction and secondary constriction, satellite, some chromosome they consist of satellites or uh, some they do not consist of satellites they consist of nuclear organizer or secondary constriction force okay chromosome the chromosomal end the end of the chromosome is known as telomere the uh, telomere is followed by the constriction in the chromosome called secondary constriction second and it is followed by another constriction called primary constriction or centromere. We uh, we have uh, we might have known about chromatids, the branches of the chromosome. The chromatids they get connected, they like connected or they are attached uh, in centromere. Like uh, how we make the chromosome is like this. This is chromosome, and this is. This is centromere. This centromere is uh, it is primary constriction. The chromosome that consists of satellites, the sphere shaped or circle like structure at one of the end of the chromosome are called sac chromosome. S A T S A T. Sat chromosome that consists of satellite. Those chromosomes which do not consist of satellite, they are not called sat chromosome. The sat stands for satellite, the part that is present in the chromosome. Now, on the basis of um, the centromere present in the chromosome, there are different types of chromosomes. There are five different types of uh, chromosome according to the presence of centromere. Look here, I have made a very simple way to remember. A centric chromosome, telocentric chromosome, acrocentric chromosome, submetacentric chromosome and metacentric chromosome. Look, a centric means no centromere. Those chromosomes which do not consist of centromere or primary constriction are a centric chromosome. Telocentric chromosome are those chromosomes which consist of centromere in terminal region means if this is the the chromosome this is the chromosome then the centromere is present here at the terminal region okay at the terminal region if the centromere is present at the terminal region then it is called telocentric chromosome acrocentric chromosome are those chromosomes which consists of centromere in the soft terminal region means below this terminal end just little below 
the terminal end that it, uh, divides the chromosome into two unequal parts. This is this is gelocentric chromosome. This is um, acrocentric chromosome. This is third. Now, some metacentric chromosome are those uh, chromosome which consist of centromere in submedian part. Submedian means just above the median center and just below the subterminal region. It also divides the chromosome into unequal parts. This is this is submetacentric chromosome and last the metacentric chromosome. The chromosome that consists of centromere at the median part means at the center that divides the chromosome into two equal half is known as metacentric chromosome. I think you might have understood about ocentric, telocentric, acrocentric, submetacentric and metacentric chromosome according to the position of centromere present there. Okay. In every living organism, the sets of chromosome are, are classified as autosomes and sex chromosome or heterosomes. Autosomes and sex autosomes and sex chromosome or heterosome. Autosomes are those uh, those chromosomes that determines the physical growth of the cell or the living organism. Like we grow due to the presence of autosomes. They, they remain in pair or uh, in haploid cell they remain single. In diploid cell they remain pair. All chromosomes they remain pair uh, in diploid cell and they remain in uh, single in haploid cell. Sex chromosomes are those chromosomes that determines the sex of the living organism. Like um, we have we have sex chromosome in human body as XX in female and XY in male. This sex chromosome determines the sex of the living organism, whether it will be male or female. Female male. If the heterosome present in a body is XX, then that body is female body. And if it consists of XY, then that body is male body. So, uh, while determining the sex, the heterosome plays a vital role. Now, let's talk about sex determination. Sex determination is the process by which a zygote is determined as a girl child or a boy child. Look here. We have here female and male having the sex chromosome XX and XY. During the time of fertilization process, the zygotes here is this they are zygotes, they are gametes. Gametes they fuse together. Now male gamete, male gamete fuses with female gamete. To form zygote. This zygote it develops into a young individual. Look here. In the male, uh, before that, the female sex chromosome are denoted as XX. Female does not have XY. Male has XY chromosome in the gamete. Now, during time of fertilization process, if male uh, gives X sex chromosome and female gives X sex chromosome then the zygote is formed with X X chromosome this gives the characteristics for a girl child but during the fertilization process if male gametes provides Y chromosome and female gametes provide X chromosome because female gamete does not have XY chromosome it means female will have always X chromosome then the zygote will be XY this XY gives boy child and this XX gives 
God is alive. So um, the the person, the body that we define as sex is male's body. In our society, we find people uh, blaming female for not giving birth to a boy child, but actually it is uh, it is done by male, not by female, because male consists of X Y chromosome that gives either girl child or boy child. Female has just X, uh, and male consists of X Y chromosome that determines the sex. So uh, male is responsible for determining whether the girl child will born or the boy child will born. So zygote, if it consists of X X chromosome, then sex chromosome, then it is girl child, and X Y chromosome, then it is boy child. So in conclusion, what we can tell is the male X Y chromosome. These are gametes, not the total chromosome present in male and female. In female, it will be forty four plus X X, and in male, it will be forty four plus X Y. Okay, but these are gametes. Male is heterogametic, consists of two different types of gametes: twenty two plus X, twenty two plus Y. So this X and Y will help in determining the uh, girl or boy. The child will be formed as forty four plus X Y like this. X X X Y because this forty four they are autosomes that remains same. So a girl child uh, will have forty four plus X X. Chromosome and 44 plus X by chromosome for boy child. Like this, the sex is determined by uh, by the gametes present in female body and male body. The gametes consist, or the chromosome in the gametes consist of the biological pigment called gene that carries the heredity character. As the gene carries the heredity character, uh, the characters they are inherited, like If uh, the parent gains certain type of uh, genetic characteristics, the characteristics is inherited. Some characters they are not inherited. For example, a doctor's daughter or doctor's son will not have the capability of uh, surgery because that is somatic characteristics. Somatic characteristics they are not inherited. Here, these autosomes they are somatic chromosome. This somatic chromosome, if any changes occurs in this somatic chromosome, it is not inherited. But if there is there is certain changes in that um, gene of that chromosome at that time only, the characters they are inherited. The inherited characters might consist of certain disorders. These disorders are known as genetic disorder. Genetic disorder. Are categorized as Mendelian disorder and chromosomal disorder. Mendelian disorder are those disorder which carries the loss of Mendel. It means they are transferred from one generation to another generation. They they can be seen in one generation. They cannot be seen in another generation according to the Mendel's law, like dominance, purity of gametes, and these all. Chromosomal disorder disorder in the chromosomes. Like we have forty six number of chromosome, and we might have uh, some people might have forty five number of chromosome, and some have might have forty seven number of chromosome. That is chromosomal disorder. And genetic disorder, defect in gene, or that Mendelian disorder. Okay, now let's talk about Mendelian disorder. Mendelian disorder are those disorder that. Occurs in autosomes and uh, heterosomes both when there is uh, certain changes in autosomes and or there is mutation in autosomes and sex chromosome. Then Mendelian disorder occurs, and this Mendelian disorder occurs in somatic cell for both male and female, and um, it might occur in the heterosome that uh, results in um, the uh, defect that occurs in male only and in female only. Uh, we will be talking about the type of sex linked disease the disease that occurs either in male or in female only are called sex linked disease and here we will be talking about hemophilia or bleeders disease bleeders disease uh, is 
Now that type of disease in which the body is unable to produce a clotting factor or clotting protein. The, um, the clotting uh, is done by platelets of human body and these platelets they need to be produced and controlled uh, by the chromosomes that is the X chromosome. It is controlled by the X chromosome. In male, okay, hemophilia occurs in male only because um, in male 44 plus XY and in female it is 44 plus XX. I told you that this X chromosome produces the clotting protein. Now, in male, in certain rare cases, this X chromosome is defected. When the X chromosome is defective, then it will not be able to produce the protein. That helps in clotting the blood. At that time, there will be excessive bleeding in the body. If a certain wound occurs, then uh, it will be very difficult for the wound to stop bleeding. For the body, uh, uh, the blood to be clotted because this defective X chromosome will not be able to produce the protein protein so that the blood can be clotted. So it occurs in male because there is no another X chromosome that will be able to produce this clotting protein. So it occurs in male only. But in female, look, why it, uh, it does not occur in female but only in male. Look here, there are two X chromosomes. And it is uh, not uh, that much possible that both the X chromosome will be defective to produce the clotting protein. So, if one of the um, X chromosome is defective, then next X chromosome will be able to produce the clotting protein. So that the bleeder's disease or hemophilia does not occur in female, but it occurs in male because male. Uh, if the X chromosome present in the male is defective, the Y chromosome is unable to produce the clotting, uh, clotting protein. So, uh, the bleeding is not stopped soon. The main symptom for hemophilia is excessive nose bleeding. Like uh, you might have seen uh, your friends uh, having nose bleeding uh, frequently. Uh, it is very rare to occur, okay? But uh, uh, if there is excessive bleeding or frequent bleeding from the nose, that might be the symptom of hemophilia. If that occurs, then uh, the physician um, asks, uh, will be asking about the family history, about uh, this, this type of disorder, whether it is inherited or not. So, hemophilia is sex-linked disease that occurs only in male, not in female. Now let's talk about chromosomal disorder. Here I have written different types of chromosomal disorder and it will be easier for you if you also learn it by writing like this. Chromosomal disorder is that disorder in which the chromosome number is either more or less than the required number of chromosomes in the body. Like our body consists of how many number of chromosomes? 46 total number of chromosomes? 23 pairs. It means if we have 45 number of chromosome or 47 number of chromosome, it means we either have less number of chromosome in the body or more number of chromosome in the body. In such condition, we have chromosomal disorder. So chromosomal disorder might occur in somatic cell or the sex chromosome. During the time of meiosis cell division, you might uh, know or you might not know about uh, uh, the separation of homologous chromosome in meiosis cell division. During meiosis cell division, the homologous chromosome, homologous chromosome are those chromosomes which are similar in structure, same size, um, and they lie close together. They are called sisters from a, uh, chromatids, and they are they lie close together. They get attached, and if they are unable to separate, now look here. If uh, this, this this is one chromosome, this is another chromosome. And if they are unable to separate, now if these two will be acting as a single chromosome, it means there will be less number of chromosomes in the body. Or 
they 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 are split into many chromosomes then there will be more number of chromosome in the body during that condition if there is defect in chromosome in that body that defect is known as aneuploidy this aneuploidy aneuploidy is the condition in which the number of chromosome in the body is less or more and the organism having aneuploidy are called aneuploids aneuploids they are organism having either less number of chromosome or more number of chromosome and if any organism has less number of chromosome or more number of chromosome then it is called aneuploidy okay aneuploidy might uh, be due to sex chromosome or autosomes and now let's talk about first chromosomal disorder called down's syndrome down syndrome is also known as 21 trisomy you all know that we have 23 pairs and every chromosome from 1 to 23 they are single in one gamete like there will be 23 chromosome in male gamete and there will be 23 chromosome in female gamete okay if the 21 number of chromosome 21 number 21st number of the chromosome gets repeated that is called autosomal uh, chromosomal disorder the 21 number of chromosome it gets repeated and there will be how many number of chromosome all together in the body it will be 45 plus xy or 45 plus xx the body will have one extra set of 21 chromosome so it is called 21 trisomy down syndrome is that condition in which a body instead of having 44 plus xy chromosome has 45 plus xy chromosome having altogether 47 number of chromosome during this there will be the repetition of 21 number of chromosome that's why it is also known as 21 trisome the the uh, down syndrome can be known by karyotype analysis uh, the study of the nucleus or chromosome by amniosynthesis process and if that is a uh, higher level uh, or it is it is normal nowadays everyone does the karyotype analysis by amniosynthesis the amniotic fluid is taken out from the uh, uterus from the amniotic sac and it is analyzed whether there is uh, some extra set of chromosome or there is less set of chromosome and it is uh, discussed with the parent whether to give the child or not so down syndrome can be uh, can be known by that karyotype analysis okay the symptom of down syndrome are um, round face okay mongolian type of face uh, mongolian type of eyelids okay, then that, uh, that, that is not for sure that every mongolian they are suffered from down syndrome okay it is just just uh, structure it is round face and mongolian type of um, eyebrows okay next the mouth remains open the mouth remains open like we can close our mouth but uh, in Down syndrome, the person having Down syndrome will have the mouth open, little bit open every time. If you have sensuous type of people, then you might go and ask if they will not do anything. But okay, uh, mouth open. And uh, another another main symptom is furrowed tongue. The tongue is furrowed. It is it is butt bit or it is little bit furrowed. A little bit same body say give one. The chat they go type one they have less mental development and um, um, they also have less development of gonads so um, another symptom for down syndrome is short neck very short neck and small fingers they have look my fingers are very long okay and the fingers are very small little little fingers are there <laughs> Now somebody might might be looking at your finger if you are looking at it, yeah, this video don't worry about that 
the smaller fingers might, might not be for Down syndrome, it might be your IDD character, but the fingers they are smaller. So the sin symptoms of Down syndrome are this up. Now let's talk about clay filter syndrome. I have written here like this, look. This is egg cell or ova and this is sperm. In both, both. This is ova and this is sperm. Clenifilter syndrome occurs in male. In a male, if, if the abnormal egg fuses with normal sperm, abnormal egg fuses with normal sperm, and normal egg fuses with abnormal sperm. At that time, 44 plus XXY number of chromosome is maintained in that zygote. This result into the clenifilter syndrome. There will be more one extra number of chromosome in that body that results in development of female characteristics in male. Look here. This extra, we all know that 44 plus XY is boy. 44 plus XX is girl. Now, here in clinical syndrome, it will be such that 44 plus XXY. Look here. It is male also. It is female also. Both. So, it is sterile male. Having the characteristics on the developed of male, but developed of female. What we call uh, third sex people. Biologically, they are not human because uh, to be human, there should be 46 number of chromosome. But here, how many number of chromosome look at? 44, 45, 46, 47. 47 number of chromosome. Biologically, Down syndrome also not human. Biologically, uh, Klein filter syndrome is also not human because to be human, there should be 46 number of chromosome, 23 pairs. But here, how many number of chromosome? 47 number of chromosome. 26 and a half years. So we cannot say they are biologically human. The clinical syndrome occurs in male. They are sterile male. The male develops the female characteristics due to the presence of this extra X chromosome there. The male uh, develops the vocal like female. The moment like female, walking style like female. They are interested towards the female characteristics. They have undertook secondary sexual characteristics of male. The voracness in the voice is not present. Uh, there is on the development of male gonads in that body. The presence of clinifilter syndrome is also done by the karyotype analysis of chromosome. This will give the number of chromosome present in the body and helps in determining the um, whether the body consists of clinifilter syndrome or not. So, the main symptom is on the development of secondary sexual characteristics in male. Here, this one. 44 plus XXY. Here, normal egg, um, sorry, abnormal egg, normal sperm, normal egg, abnormal sperm. That will develop into 47 number of chromosome called Klenifilter syndrome. The next syndrome is Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome occurs in female. They are sterile female. The sterile female is formed in which the abnormal ova, here also it is ova, when it fuses with normal sperm or the normal ova fuses with abnormal sperm, at that time the body will have or the zygote will have 44 plus X, 44 plus X having total 45 number of chromosome called Turner syndrome. The Turner syndrome is developed in sterile female. This sterile female uh, can be can, uh, characterized by mus um, masculine body. Okay, they do not have the feminine characteristics. They have very big neck muscle. Neck muscle usually it develops in male only. But in Turner syndrome, the neck muscle is developed in female. They have underdeveloped breast and uterus. There is no presence of menstrual cycle. They will not be having any type of menstrual cycle. When they do not have a menstrual cycle, it means they are sterile. They have less mental development too. 
they are also categorized as third sex. In our uh, local language, um, they are called third sex uh, human, but biologically they are not human. So these are the chromosomal disorders that we study today. In um, Down syndrome, 47 number of chromosomes, Klein-Kutter syndrome, 47 number of chromosomes, and Turner syndrome, 45 number of chromosomes. Okay, so here are seven uh, organisms with the number of chromosomes present here. Don't get confused, the number of chromosomes and the pairs, okay. Uh, in examination, you might get the question, write the number of chromosomes and you will be writing the number of pairs. Then that might not uh, allow you to gain the marks. In human, there are 46 number of chromosomes, altogether 23 pairs. So it is different. Look. In frog, there are 26 number of chromosomes and 14 pairs. In rat, 40 number of chromosomes, monkey, 54, onion, 16, sugarcane, 80, gorilla, 48, rice, 24, pine, 24, and mugger, 2 number of chromosomes. So you can, you can just translate it into or change it, it into pairs like 20 and it will be how much? 27. It will be how much? 8. It will be how much? 14. It will be how much? 14. It will be 12. It will be 12 and 1 pair. 1 pair of chromosome can similar. So you need to know this. Here is your word. Okay, here I have 14 now earlier. Uh, it's 24. Okay. 24 48. Okay. So these are the number of chromosomes that is present in the uh, in the different organism. Okay. Now let's talk about cell division. The division of a matured cell is known as cell division. We all know that there are two types of cells. Somatic cell and reproductive cell. Somatic cell, those cells that require growth. They require growth. Reproductive cell, those produces gamete. Those cells which produces gamete. They are called reproductive cell. According to the cell, the division of the cell occurs. Uh, in the board, I have already written mitosis cell division and meiosis cell division. So mitosis cell division, before, before that, let me tell you, diploid and haploid. Diploid cells are those cells having peer chromosome. Those cells having peer chromosome. Two N. This is peer chromosome. There are two N. Means one peer. Haploid chromosome, on peer chromosome. And just, just one chromosome, it is not peer. So the cells that consist of peer chromosome are called diploid chromosome. Uh, uh, sorry, cells. And the cells which consist of uh, on peer chromosome are called haploid cells. Now look here. Mitosis cell division. Mitosis cell division is that type of cell division in which a mature diploid mother cell divides into two diploid daughter cells. This is a matured mother cell, diploid mother cell, and this mother cell divides into two diploid daughter cells. The number of chromosomes in mother cell and daughter cell remains same. There is no reduction in number of chromosomes in mitosis cell division. But meiosis cell division is that type of cell division in which a matured diploid mother cell divides into four haploid daughter cells in two phases. This is meiosis first and this is meiosis second. There is no such division of uh, all the uh, types of mitosis cell division. It is single. It's uh, a mother cell, mature mother cell divides it into daughter cell. 
and here matured diploid mother cell. First divide into haploid uh, daughter cells or meiosis first and then divides into haploid or daughter cells. Amyloid daughter cell. This is diploid. Meiosis cell division occurs in somatic cell. The meiosis cell division occurs in somatic cell, while, oh sorry, meiosis cell division occurs in somatic cell and meiosis cell division occurs in reproductive cell. The somatic cell, as meiosis cell division occurs in somatic cell, then there are certain significance that is uh, carried out by meiosis cell division. In short, I will be writing it as Z A R Z. Garg. This is growth. Somatic cell requires growth. Or sexual reproduction. Somatic cells, by the means of somatic cell, the organism can reproduce asexually, like by vegetative propagation in plants, binary fission in animals. Multiple vision in animals without the involvement of gametes, regeneration and replacement of cells. Here, the cells they are regenerated again. The same cells they are regenerated again. So, regeneration and replacement of cell is done by meiosis cell division. Sometimes you might get once in your hand in your body, and uh, after some days you will get a scar here, just the marking, and you will get the organ, you will get the cell back. Not the organ, you will get the cell back. That is regeneration and replacement of cell. And this is genetic stability. There will be the animal having, what, well, or plant having same number of chromosomes in the cells. Genetic stability. These are the significance of the meiosis cell division. Okay, now meiosis cell division. In meiosis cell division, the haploid daughters they are formed. Okay, and it occurs in reproductive cells. The significance of meiosis cell division can be categorized into three, three main points. Sexual reproduction, genetic stability, uh, sorry, genetic variation, and stability of living organism. Here, genetic stability, same number of uh, chromosomes will be transferred to uh, the offspring from the parents. And here it will be genetic variation but stability of living organism. Sexual reproduction. Genetic variation and stability of living organism. Sexual reproduction. As the meiosis cell division occurs in reproductive cells, it produces gametes. Sexual reproduction occurs by the fusion of gametes. No meiosis cell division, no, no production of gametes, no sexual reproduction. Genetic variation. During meiosis cell division, there are different stages of meiosis cell division that we are not going to study in our chapter. There are different stages. Among them, in meiosis first, in prophase first, there occurs crossing over. Due to this crossing over, the living organism uh, gets mixed characteristics that varies the living organism from one another. You can, you can see your mom looking different, your mom, dad looking different and you looking different. You, get, you have the characteristics of both your mom and dad. The crossing over, that results in genetic variation. The organism uh, varies from each other. Stability of living organism. Now, there is certain thing that you need to understand about the stability of living organism. 46 number of chromosome is present in human body. Now, by meiosis cell division, haploid number of chromosome is formed. Then, in male gametes and in female gametes. These are haploid cells. This N means how many number of chromosomes must be over here? It will be 22 plus X or 
22 plus y total 23 here how many number of chromosome will be 22 plus x when they fuse with each other then only how many number of chromosome will be formed 46 number of chromosome will be formed so here it will be 22 plus 22 44 plus xx or 44 plus xy this gives the stability of living organism if there is no meiosis cell division then there is no stability of living organism only there is mitosis cell division it means there will not be haploid gametes there will be diploid gametes when there will be diploid gametes the number of chromosome will be doubled and when the number of chromosome will be doubled then we are not human if in place of 46 number of chromosome if there is 46 plus 46 number of chromosome then 92 number of chromosome is that organism human no so it will give the stability of living organism so meiosis cell division it uh, gives the stability of living organism genetic variation and sexual reproduction while mitosis cell division gives growth or sexual reproduction regeneration and replacement of cell and genetic stability of living organism like this we come to the end of this chapter uh, chromosome and sex determination. Thank you for watching this video. Share this video so that uh, many of uh, the students like you will be able to understand about this chapter. Uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up because we need to do a lot of labor for teaching in an empty class and uh, preparing the video. Uh, don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you everybody.